Welcome to the Angelscapes podcast, where you're encouraged to uncover and develop a direct connection with your soul's power, wisdom, and spiritual intuition that is ready to blossom. We'll explore new ideas, compelling tips, and real steps to help you learn simple spiritual practices. We're a safe place to learn more about accessing your soul's power with education and spiritual wholeness that could bring more clarity to your life. Now here's your host, a practicing medium, Akashic Records practitioner, spirit artist, coach, and mentor, Dr. Reverend Nancy Smith. Do you want to wake up your superpower? Where does intuition come from? Are you ready to listen to your own intuition? Are you ready to use it? We're going to talk about the five languages of intuition. Hello, this is Nancy Nancy Smith, and I'm hosting the Angelscapes podcast. Um, you have a superpower within yourself, and this superpower just needs a tiny bit of development or maybe a lot of bit of de development, but it will augment your life in um, amazing ways that um, maybe you haven't thought of before, or many of you might already be using your intuition and um, are getting a really great benefits from it. So I'm, um, we're on Facebook Live right now. So write any comments or any thoughts that you might have. Um, down and I'll take a look and answer whatever you have. But right now I'm going to talk to you about where does intuition come from? It comes from our higher power. It comes from source. It comes from the one mind. It comes from all that is. And it filters down through technically, this is spiritual technical stuff, a chakra above our head. It's the gold chakra. Um, and that where our higher power is. And it also comes down from a chakra above that, um, eight to nine, which is an opalescent chakra from the one mind, from the non-personal place. And that information is constantly flowing through us um, at a very steady rate. It's always there for us to use. How we access it is from our calm mind, the alpha waves or the uh, not the not the beta waves of the busy mind, but the calm, quiet mind. And that calm, quiet mind is always sneaking in there in moments when we have um, maybe reflective moments or moments where we're just kind of paused and not thinking about anything special. But the intuition that I'm talking about is coming from someplace bigger than yourself or bigger than ourselves. And it has uh, lots of information in it. It has guidance, it has direction, and it also has new thoughts in it. Um, and I have this uh, kind of quote that I used I, a couple of times already, intuition and intuition. What's the difference? Intuition is loud and fearful and controlling, demanding a sense that drives us to do, plan, judge, blame, shame, no matter what. It's always keeping us busy and it's always motivating us with um, probably fear or probably a drive or probably anxiety or probably it's not enough. You have to do more. And this is our unconscious self that keeps us trucking through life in ordinary, normal ways. Intuition is that quiet voice within that takes us out of the ordinary into the extraordinary. It's very um, challenging signs. Our intuition is not going to tell us what we're used to hearing. Our intuition is going to say to us, hey, look at that. Uh, I bet you never thought of that before. Our higher self that's giving us our intuition, that's talking to us about these, these different languages is actually a place, um, it's like connected to our soul, it's connected to our spirit, our essence, and it has um, a different perspective than we do in our normal lives. It has a higher perspective and our higher self is really wanting our highest and best. This is the part of us that is purest and closest to the creator. Um, and it's also the part that is connected to the flow of um, the natural flow of life or the natural flow of creation, creativity, because it is the closest to the creator and um, it has a lot to tell us. So how does your intuition show up in your life? Well, we've got five ways that the intuition can show up in your life. The first way I like to think of it as um, dreams and visions. You know how you have that dream? at night and sometimes our dreams are just letting out your yayas 
and just kind of saying to yourself, oh, I just needed to work that out. Glad I worked it out. Now I'm going to get up, get up in the morning and go on to my day again. It's also dreams that kind of express our feelings. It can be anxiety dreams or fear dreams or, or dreams that just express things that we're not readily um, willing to express during the day, during our regular time. I'm not going to say that out loud. Did I say that out loud? Oh my gosh. So um, we say it to ourselves in our dreams. But the other things that dreams have is they have guidance. Another type of dream would be a guidance from maybe um, a, a wisdom place. Wisdom, intuition is often from a wisdom place that will maybe we'll dream about that date we had the other night and something funny happens in the dream where the date maybe can't unlock the door or you can't unlock the door to see the date, uh, the, the person that you're going to meet. And it's kind of your dream is telling you, don't go there, don't unlock that door with that person. Or sometimes the dreams can be kind of premonition dreams where you may have a sense of something that you'll dream about something and son of a gun if it doesn't come true the next day. And those dreams have a different bit of a texture to them, a little bit of a flavor. Sometimes they come in symbolic and sometimes they come in in small bits of information that if we spend some time thinking about them or, or just letting ourselves daydream through them, and I'll talk to you about daydreams in a minute, um, to get unpack the information within them. And those two kinds of dreams, the dreams that we have uh, guidance and the dreams that we have premonitions are intuition. They're from our intuitive place. They're from our higher mind or they're from our higher self. Um, they're from, could be from your guardian angel. They could be from a loved one who's passed over to the other side and they're here to inform you. You want to pay attention to those dreams. How do you know which dreams are just working out your yayas and which dreams are premonitions? Well, they have a texture and they have a feel to them. So if you're really interested in developing that dream intuition, write your dreams down. Ask yourself to remember the dreams at night and then write your dreams down in a journal. And eventually you'll start to see um, the patterns. You'll you'll feel how that dream fell to you. You'll see the symbol symbolism. Sometimes yaya dreams are floating around and you're flying from one thing to the other and they have a specific feel to them that's um, individual to you. And sometimes the premonition dreams will be very specific, clear, short, and concise. And the guidance dreams may take you through something, a decision that you're trying to make and may show you symbolisms and things like that. I remember having a dream, oh, years and years ago, I had small kids and in a marriage, and we were having some financial troubles. And I kept having a dream over and over again for years about a calendar and there were little um, amounts of money on each calendar day and when I got to the last day in the calendar it says it doesn't add up the money's not adding up and once I came uh, to realize what that dream meant is that there was a, a leak in our money the money was going out somewhere that I wasn't aware of and I didn't know about it and I had to take a look at it so once I and I started to listen to that dream pay attention to what it could possibly mean and then I became kind of like private eye and I looked for places in my life why why isn't this money adding up why is what's the problem with this and I found a leak and um and I was able to deal with it um I've had dreams about people coming in and out of my life I've had dreams about um my parents before they passed I've had dreams about my my mother my dad would um would drive my dad crazy my mom was not well for many many years and um I always knew when she wasn't well and I would call my dad before he called me and he'd pick up the phone and go, Nancy. I said, yeah. So is she in the hospital? Yeah. She just went in, you know, a couple hours ago or something like that, or she would be coming down with something. And I said, dad, did you check mom's temperature? Did you look at, at um, these specific symptoms? And he goes, you know, I was just noticing that. And I was wondering what to do about it. And he'd be amazed. He, he hadn't said anything to anybody. And here I was calling him telling him because I learned to listen to my intuition that something was up and he needed to pay attention. And, and being a medium, I all, all, always, I often find, and they're not in dreams, visions or things that I see in nature or things that I see in front of me that are telling me something. I work with animals a lot. So animals can tell me, hey, pay attention to your intu intuition. Something's coming around. There's, we could maybe have a whole show on totem animals, but I have several specific animals that show up in my life that are, hey, heads up. What, what crows, ravens, and red birds are always saying to me, 
and hawks as well. They always have messages for me, but it's my intuition that hears the message when they show up for me. Another, and we're talking about clairvoyance. When you see things, when you have visual um, hits on something, it's usually in, in your third eye, it's usually inside of your mind. And a little, a little movie can sometimes play itself out or a picture will show up. Um, daydreams are a really awesome place to receive intuitive hits. And how um, I see people play with their daydreams, how I see with I, when I play with my daydreams, I'll be having kind of a daydream about, I wonder what's going to be on TV tonight, or I wonder if this thing's going to work, or, or I'll start to um, wonder about a person and think, I wonder what they're doing right now. And what I have learned to do, and I want you to try this, try this at home, is when you have a daydream or you're thinking about something, let the daydream play out. And let the daydream go where it wants to go. Sometimes they take on a life of it's their own and pay attention to how they're, um, how they're playing out, what they're talking to you and how you feel about how they're playing out. Um, sometimes you'll be thinking about somebody and you'll be thinking and thinking and thinking about them. And if you let it play out, you'll realize, oh, they must, uh, you'll feel how they feel. They must be doing this you must be thinking about this you might be feeling about this sometimes i don't even get that far i'll just be thinking of a person and suddenly them they pick up the phone and call and that's always really cool when that small hit of intuition happens but if we are thinking about somebody a little thing that you can do is just um where, what are they doing right now ask yourself some questions how are they feeling right now how do i feel when i'm thinking about this person and you'll start to get information about why you're thinking about that person. Are they thinking about you? Or do they need a help, a helping hand with something? Or are they puzzling over something and you can um, reach out to them? And oftentimes I've done this where they say, gee, I was just wishing you'd call me. And it's always lovely when that happens. It's a, it's, I, I feel that builds relationships when we're paying to, uh, attention to our intuition that way. Um, another place where you could kind of force um, clairvoyance or force your envisioning, some people are better at envisioning things than others. And so this works whether you're good at envisioning or not. If you have a problem that you need to solve or something that you want to have an answer about, what I like to do to prompt this intuition to come forward is I think about the problem and I think about any kind of situation. Here's a solution to the situation that I can think of. Sometimes I'll think of a ridiculous solution to that problem and I'll play it out in my head and I'll play it out in my imagination as best I can. And I feel how I feel, body language. Or I'll find out that I can only I can only play it out or imagine it out so far and then it stops. And when that happens, I know that that's the wrong path. That's not going to happen. And then I'll come back to that same situation and I'll apply maybe a, a solution that I think should happen. So I got my shoulds going and I'll play it out again and see what happens. And sometimes it'll take a little turn on its own and it'll go to the, the imagination of that situation will all of a sudden turn a left turn and then I've got an even bigger problem or something even more ridiculous. Pay attention to those visualizations because maybe you're telling yourself symbolically or the, your, your intuition in the universe is telling you symbolically this thing is going to take a turn on its own and that's why you're thinking about it and that's why you need to pay attention and then follow it through through time imagine what's what is this going to look like in three days what is this going to look like in three months or three years and feel how it feels it, may, it might go cold after three months and say you know what this this is going nowhere that kind of thing or you may hit something um a solution that you hadn't even thought of and so bringing in an invisible situation, uh, bringing in the situation with an invisible solution and imagine, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to imagine how it feels three days from now, three months from now, three years from now. And you may be getting excited about three days or three months and it may feel just right and it's perfect, even though you don't know what the solution is. So that's another signal to yourself to say, I don't have the solution yet, but there is a really good solution on its way. Be patient. So that, again, is clairvoyance where you're using your third eye, where you're using your, this very powerful envisioning center. And again, you don't have to be a really visual person to do it. You just need to ask the right questions to take yourself forward and listen to your body language, listen to how it feels to you. So that's one language. That's clairvoyance. And another one is um, how do you feel? I talked a little bit about um, body language. And um, how do you feel about the vision that you're seeing? And so body language is a really good indicator 
um, for intuition to sneak on through. You know how you say, geez, I got butterflies in my stomach or I don't feel good about this. This is giving me a stomach ache. Now, to sort this out is sometimes you have butterflies because you're about to do something that is nerve wracking to you and, or you're going to meet someone or talk to somebody or you're going to get in front of people and 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 give a, a speech. You got butterflies. That's normal. Or you're about to do something um, that is anxiety provoking for you. Going to the dentist, for instance, is very anxiety provoking. And so in there, where's the intuition in that? Um, sometimes it's there and sometimes it's not. But I feel like if you like going to the dentist and you're nervous and you're not so sure you want to go be quiet spend a couple minutes before you leave for the dentist office say what am I nervous about and then again play it out in your mind play it out in your head um in your imagination in your in your center and feel how you feel you know when I get to the dentist office how am I going to feel and when I get into the dentist chair how am I going to feel and when the dentist sticks the thing in my mouth how am I going to feel and what are they going to tell me so when they're telling me something how am I going to feel about that and that's a very good source of um, getting intuitive information you may not have the actual mental logical information but the feelings and the senses will talk to you um, I suggest if you really want to kind of work this one out or or develop it a little more start small um, when I get in the car and go to the grocery store, what's going to be on sale? Or how, I'm going to be, how am I going to feel about my grocery store, store shopping? And how am I going to, um, how much am I going to spend? And then let your intuition build from there. So you're building in with your, that's clairsentient, with your feeling. Um, how does it feel to you? How, um, and if you're feeling a negative feeling, that's not so much intuition as it is a little flag that says, can you pay attention to this a little more deeply? Um, if you're anxious about something, does it, it, or if you're angry about something, does it mean that that's the truth about that thing? It just means that you're having feelings about it and you can use your intuition to blend in with your wisdom self to what am I, I'm angry about this, but what am I really angry about? Um, and maybe the anger has nothing to do with what's happening in front of you, but maybe there's a piece there that needs attention um, to, or maybe there's questions you need to ask, or maybe there's, you need to go further and not take it at face value and just to do some exploring. So letting your emotions give you a signal that says, look a little further, that can trigger your intuition, that can trigger your higher wisdom. And always go to the highest and best. Can you tell me, ask, this, set the intention that the universe and your soul and your higher self give you information that's full of wisdom for your highest and best and will lead you to the best place possible. So setting an intention to work with your intuition, very important, very important. So another language um, is um, a sense of knowing just knowing inside of yourself. Um, oftentimes, and body language can play into this one as well, but, but you just can say, uh, my feet, my fingers are tingling or my feet are tingling or or something's going on, But and I know that I have to pay attention to it. Clear cognizant is what I'm talking about. And mostly how clear cognizant works in intuition is that you know something is there or you know something to be true is true but you don't know why. Now, a lot of times you can mix that up with, I'm going to know this and I know this is true and nobody's backing it up and I have no facts backing me up. Can be plain old stubbornness or can be a belief system or can be something that you really wish was true, but it's not. That is not intuition. The clear, the clear cognizance or the clear knowing usually comes with a soft voice and it clicks right in your belly. And you can't really deny it, even though everyone around you might be denying it. And the only thing to do with that is to follow it through, to ask questions, to go a little further, or to follow your guidance. And everyone's saying that party is going to be the best party to go to. And everyone's saying it, but inside of you going, no, it's not. And you can do two things. You can follow it through and pay, pay attention to the feeling of this isn't going to be so great. And then you can observe to see is this, am I right or am I wrong? Is this not good? Is is not good for me or what's going on? And then you can come away from that situation with an understanding of is when I feel this way, it's not going to be so good for me. Here's the options of what it could be. Or you can choose to, once you get confident in getting these um, clear knowings to say, well, you know what? Not for me today and follow that through. 
and um, see what happens. So you didn't say so you decided not to go to the party, not to go to the gathering. And then later on, you find out everyone had a cold there and everyone's home sick with the flu. Hey, that works, right? You, you missed a big, you missed a big problem. Um, clear knowing is also knowing maybe you're talking to somebody in a relationship and you know, you just know that what they're saying isn't exactly on point or isn't exactly accurate. Or you know, there's something else. Trust that feeling and be compassionate with the other person, be encouraging with the other person and know maybe information hasn't caught up with them yet. You know, you can know that uh, there's something um, that's going to happen or there's a truth that they haven't seen yet. This is, and, and as I talk about the, about that, there's a truth that they haven't seen yet. Sometimes the intuition will tell you something that other people aren't ready to know or aren't ready to hear. And you're the only one that has that piece of information. What are you gonna do with it? Will you trust yourself? You're building, as you build your intuition, you're actually building trust with yourself. And if you're having a, a piece of information that not everybody else has, you need to do your homework, be the private eye, be the be investigator and be curious as to know, why am I getting this hit? Again, you're building trust with yourself. But sometimes when we know something, uh, maybe everyone has agreed to believe in a certain thing. Everybody has agreed that a certain fact is a fact, but you know darn well, it just doesn't sit right. It doesn't it doesn't feel right. You see sitting and feeling, these are, these are sensations or in your mind, um, one thing that happens to me for intuition is somebody will tell me something or I'll be listening to something on TV and none of it makes any sense. That doesn't make sense. I can't pull this together and I can't pull that together. And when that happens to me, I know either I'm not hearing the whole story or there's another truth underneath that's even more important to hear. And when I have those confusions in my mind, I've worked with my intuition enough to know that what I'm hearing isn't accurate or it's a lie. It's not the truth. So I'm I'm patient with myself and I'm patient with other people. And I, I have uh, uh, the questions that I ask for myself is, are they believing in something? Is this a belief system? Is this the should system where they want it to be this way because it helps them with a certain emotional aspect, but it's not actually true. And then I, you know, Ben, be curious, be the, be the, um, the searcher uh, and uh, look for look for the words or look for the truth or the facts that align with click. It makes sense. It's falling into place. And um, you're now in alignment with what's really happening. When something happens in front of us and we are not in alignment with this, it's our intuition that's saying there's something not right here. It's just not quite right. Sounds good. Smells good. Looks good. The sparkles are there, but it's not hitting me right. Um, there's the story called the emperor uh, the Emperor's Clothing, remember this old um, kind of fairy tale, and it's a story about this emperor that um, wants to have the best clothing ever, and he hires a tailor, and he pays a lot of money, and this tailor makes him this gorgeous suit, but the tailor tricks him, and he says, it's made of the finest cloth, or it's so light, and you just can wear it wherever, and everyone will think that you're gorgeous, but you'll feel so comfortable in it or however this story goes. So the um, emperor goes out, he's tricked by this tailor and everyone's saying, because he's the emperor, oh my God, that's a gorgeous suit. Look at how good he looks and he's in underwear until a little boy says, the emperor has no clothes on and shh, don't say anything. And, and we're all in agreement that the emperor has beautiful clothes on. And this happens in society a lot where we're asked to believe something that isn't quite right. And the pressure is so intense that we need to believe it because everybody else is believing it. But inside the little butterflies are going or the mind is going or that innocent child within is saying, there's no clothes here. There's nothing, there's no cheese here. There's nothing here that, that I'm being told is there. And that's your intuition. That's your, it go taking you to your wisdom place and learning to trust your intuition is key to helping you move through a very complicated society in a very complicated time. And that's why intuition, um, in developing it, learning to trust your intuition is very important, especially in these days. Um, so I'm going to check in and see if I got anyone in uh, saying hello on Facebook. How are we doing with this? Um, this is a fun, this is one of my favorite topics ever. And um, I hope you're enjoying it as much as I am enjoying it. And just a little kind of break, I want to talk to you. Um, I'm on angelscapes.net and I have plenty of um, 
things to offer on my website. So you can go and take a look. Um, I, I have discovery sessions, 15 minute free um, discovery sessions that you can, um, if you want to know more about me, um, make an appointment with me. 15 minutes, angelscapes.net, book a session, find the free 15 minute discoveries and, and um, I'd be happy to talk to you. And also there's um, blogs and radio shows and all kinds of things. So, um, and you can um, keep an eye out for me here on this page. I also have another page called Angelscapes and you can find information about me on both of those pages. And I just want to say hello to my buds. Joey's there and Christine is there and Susan Kellner. Hi guys. Thanks for showing up. I love your support. I love you listening to me. Um, just want to remind you that I'm here Tuesdays at seven o'clock. Every Tuesdays, each topic will be different. Um, so let's go back to other. We've gone through three languages. No, two languages. Clairvoyance, clairsentient, claircognizance. We've gone through three. There's two more languages. And one is smells and tastes that your intuition can talk to you from. You don't know, saying this, I smell a rat. Or there's a I have a bad taste in my mouth from this thing. And your intuition is speaking through your clairgustance or your clair aliences. They're speaking through your senses of taste and smell to kind of give you a clue or a hint that um, it's it's not quite right. Or it could be, oh, this tastes, this thing is tastes so sweet. It's just the sweetest taste in my mouth. And it has nothing to do with anything in your mouth, but it has to do with something you're thinking about or a choice or decisions that you're making. So check in. How does this taste? You can actually ask yourself when you're making a decision, how does this decision taste to me? How does it smell to me? And, or when you're listening, this is kind of hilarious, but if you're, somebody's bending your ear and telling you a lot of stuff, you could say, what does this smell like? What does this taste like? And if it smells like a duck, it's a duck. Um, but that is a very strong way to, um, bend your intuition or have your intuition connect to you and, and bend your, you know, tell you what you're hearing, if it's true or not, or what you're doing. Um, oftentimes in mediumship, I will have messages from spirit and it'll come through a taste or a smell that um, perfume or the aftershave or the, or the cookies that were being baked, or um, I'll have a kind of a taste of lots of different um, spices in my mouth. And I, if I can recognize the taste of the spices, I can know where the person's come from culturally or, or, the, or anything. Um, was it the person a good cook or was they a lousy cook or, or many different things like that? Um, I also in real time have smelled things um, that were um, actually telling me that a spirit was nearby or I would go into a meeting or go into a situation and I'd have a waft of a smell of something, a good whiff and go, huh, what is that? It has nothing to do with what's around me. And I'll say, what is that smell telling me? What is that smell reaching out for me? What am I, am I being red flagged here? I'm being alarmed or am I just being more forewarned or am I being welcomed? Hey, go for this. This, this is a good thing. So pay attention to your senses, taste and smell and ask your intuition to work through them. Another um, language is hearing. That doesn't sound right. That that doesn't line up right. That is like fingernails on, on the blackboard feeling when I hear that. And those um, sounds, you hear them right behind your ear, right, right in your clairaudient place. Um, you'll maybe hear a voice that says, no, 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 no. Or you hear a voice that says, yes, yes, yes. Um, those are other ways um, that intuition can reach out to us through sound, through set, so happy sounds, sweet sounds, or voices or actual words. And we, um, we may not hear a whole sentence or you may hear a little snippet of something. The other day I was sitting at a friend's house and I heard somebody call my name, Nancy. And I got up and I looked everywhere everywhere to see where that noise could have come from till I realized, well, I think somebody was actually calling my name. And then I, I sat down quietly and said, who's talking to me? Um, and that's another um, good way to work with your intuition to see you hear something. There's no reason for hearing it. There's nothing connect to it. And then you go within and say, well, well, what am I, what am I, what's being brought to my attention right now? What do I need to pay attention to? Where do I need to go with this kind of thing? Um, so also 
sound, um, lots of intuition hits can, and, and this has happened to me plenty of times where I'm listening to a song or I'm listening to a television show or I'm listening to somebody talk to me. I, I feel like it's more like through songs or speeches or something, I will hear something else behind it. Maybe the song and the words will touch my heart and may, and I will feel a certain way because it's a reminder of something in the past, or maybe the words are just a message that I absolutely needed to hear in that moment. And it clicks right in place. It's the intuition of wisdom. And that's a beautiful place. And other times I have heard, listened to lectures. And as I listen to the lecture, oddly enough, I will hear other words being said right behind the lecturer. That's kind of an unusual thing that happens, but it, I've heard enough people where it happens so you're hearing the voice behind the voice and you're hearing what do they really mean or what's really being said here. That's happened to me often. Oftentimes I used to listen to, and I still do, listen to motivational talks or inspirational talks from either channeled people. And I remember listening to one one of my favorite channels. And as I listened to him talk, it's like, he stepped right out of the, the um, cassette player and stood next to me. And he said, are you listening to this? Because this is applying to that. And uh, you could, I could have applied it to a thousand things, but the words came out, this is applying to this in your life, paying attention to it. So there was a strong feeling around that as well as a um, the sound itself stood out on its own. Um, so inner voices and sounds are important to listen to, to get intuitive hits from listening to somebody talk to you, listen to their voice. How does their voice feel to you? Where does that voice go? Are there any other words that you're thinking about while you're listening to them can be another way of pulling in your intuition or challenging yourself to, um, have that intuitive sense show up while you're listening. Um, so, so what's driving you? You know, we have five languages here. We have the the clairvoyance, we have the clairsentient, we have the claircognizance, we have clairalience and gusting, we have clairaudience. But but what's driving you? What's what's making you um, pushing you? What are you hoping for? What are you wishing for? And intuition can show up in these emotions. And I've, I've talked to you about this before. But our intuition can show up in our desires and our wishes and our thoughts. Now, if we're obsessing over things, which you remember, um, it's intuition, um, and it's only speaking to you through fears, through desires or lacks of, lack of things. But if we're really wishing for something, we could be called to do a certain action or take an action or do a certain thing or pay attention to those desires. Um, I've heard of stories where, gee, you know, I, I was kind of wanting a cup of coffee and I don't usually go out this time of day, but I'm going to run down and get that cup of coffee. And sure enough, they run down and get a cup of coffee. And there is somebody that they've been trying to connect with for months and months. And they're standing there getting a cup of coffee too. So a desire or a wish came into uh, intuition and action, intuition and moment. Taking an action when you feel like something sometimes is very, very important. Or, um, you know, I'm going to get that extra ga um, gas. I'm going to top off my gas tank, even though I can go another 50 miles. I think I'm going to top, top it off. And then you find yourself at the end of, day, at end of the day stuck in a snowstorm or stuck in a traffic jam where there are no gas stations anywhere to be found. And you're running out of gas because you thought you had 50 miles. Now you have 10. So having a desire to do something can be an intuitive hit. So do pay attention to those. And how do you trust them? How do you know if this is just my worry or this is um, me actually having an intuitive hit? You practice. You simply practice. Next time you have an intuitive hit to be somewhere or do something, do it. And then see what happens. See what comes your way. See what you're what you're opened up to um, as you take that action. Maybe there's nothing there. But I tell you what, if you follow an intuitive hit, and um, whether you understand what's there or not for you, you're building your trust. You're also building that pathway for your intuition to grow larger and larger and become clearer and clearer. Remember, intuition isn't going to necessarily be loud and abrasive and demanding. Your intuition is going to have this soft, subtle voice that takes you to a place of well-being, that takes you to a place of it's okay or guidance of not there, but come here. So how do you block your intuition? Why do we block our intuition? If this intuition is such a very cool, awesome thing to have, why do we block it? Partially we block it because we don't understand it. 
partially block it because nobody agrees with us. It's not the common sense that we're being heard, hearing all around us. As a matter of fact, common sense is not intuition. Common sense is an agreement that a group of people have to follow, to do, to be like each other. Intuition is going to take you away from common sense often. Um, not all the time. And don't get me, don't take me the wrong way, but our intuition can take us either beyond the common sense or underneath the common sense. So we understand what's driving this thought. This thought is, is not taking us, taking me to a place of well-being, or this agreed upon thought is not taking the group to agreed upon place, but you don't want to be the only one saying it. You don't want to be the only one seeing it. So you clam up, you don't follow through and you stuff the intuition down and you stuff that wisdom down and it doesn't have a chance to grow and bloom. So that's how intuition can get blocked. Uncertainty can block the intuition, lack of practice. Our logical mind can get in the way of our intuition. Say, don't bother to do that. What are you doing that for? Oh, that's ridiculous. Don't waste your time. And so we believe our logical mind or our doubtful mind or our cynical mind, and we follow that. Now that's where your path's going to grow. That's where your strength's going to go. And instead of going, let's try this intuition, let's try this creative place. Let's try this curiosity. That's the path that's going to go if you feed that path. So that's a one way of blocking the intuition by not nurturing it, by not letting it grow. So pay attention to your daily lives. Pay attention to your thoughts, your feelings that are outside of the box and grow them and see where they take you, see where they go. There's a shamanic um, teaching that talks about meeting life up river where you can, um, wake up in the morning or start the day or start a project and you can imagine using your intuitive gifts that we just talked about what's down the river what's going to be there when i get to work or what's going to be there in two hours what's it going to be there by lunchtime what's going to be there by the evening and what you may not have the actual um dot cross the t's and dot the i's explanation but you may have a feeling or a sense or one little thing might pop up um you could get um so what's two hours from now and you'll see a pen and a piece of paper and go well what's that all about a pen and then you can stop for a minute and say well what about a pen do i have a pen with me and then sure enough you have a situation where you need a pen and a paper to to pass on some information um, so that those kinds of things can build to become more powerful and more and much stronger. I had a practice um, that I did when I had a corporate job, and I would have my list um, of to do list, and I would I would leave leave the office with my to do list on my desk of what I needed to do the next day. And when I, the first thing when I came in the morning, once my coat was hung up and I was sitting down looking at the to do list, I would see. Um, and I have I'm a very clear. Um, buoyant person I could see things and the list actually would turn into colors and I could see which were the brightest colors on the list I would circle those and do them first even though they're not at the top of the list and I found that I was always accurate spot on I would circle the thing at the bottom of the list take care of it first and then sure enough within two hours um, manager would be calling me and said can you get that what should, that thingamajig done and I already did it because I, I saw that it was a bright color and I circled it and I did I said oh yeah I'll deliver it I'll deliver it in, in, in a half an hour, even though I had it done, but that's a trick. So um, so colors, you use the intuition as a way to meet yourself upriver, to meet life that's coming towards you from downriver, what's coming towards you. So I'm just going to say good night. I've kind of come wound things down. Let's see who else is here. And I'm just, um, hello, Mike. And I'm really glad you guys have been very supportive and helpful. And um, if you ever want to ask me any questions, um, post them on Facebook because I'm Facebook Live at Nancy of the Angelscapes and I will answer them or I will address them in the next podcast. And thank you so much for your support. And these um, will be left on um, my Facebook page, but they will also be podcasts. You can find these on the YouTube channel. Um, and you can also find them on any podcast station that your favorite podcast station will be there. Look for Angelscapes and subscribe. And we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for joining the Angelscapes podcast. We hope you've gained new insights and inspiration for your journey to uncover and access your soul's power. For more information and a deeper dive into finding clarity in your life, Go to angelscapes.net.
Remember to subscribe so you can be part of the discussion. It may just change your life. See you next time.